Hi, and welcome to the Google Sheets tutorial on how to create Google Sheets charts. Today we're going to look at a overall guide on how to make beautiful charts in Google Sheets. When it comes to Google Sheets chart making, it's quite simple. Um, Google Sheets has done a lot to advance the, the simplicity of this process um, within, within their operating system. There's a lot of value to a Google Sheets chart whether it be making visually appealing data um, for a presentation or just trying to organize the data in a way you can read at a later date. When it comes to presentations and business data, having it in a chart will create a much, much simpler um, process to read the data, allowing people to make quick visually aided decisions. These decisions will be much more accurate and on point because the data is presented in a way that's readable. So, like I said, it's a fairly simple process to create a Google Sheets chart, one we're going to run over real quick, and we'll run over all the ways to make them really pretty and beneficial to what you need. So, the first step here, let's go ahead and this is a chart I built a bit of ago, but we're going to delete that and start from scratch so we can show you how to do it. The first step is always going to be selecting your data. There's a few ways to do this, um, but essentially you want to click drag, and dra um, click, drag, and select the data you want to do. And then there's up here, there's two ways. You can either insert chart right here, or you can come over to the same little emblem and hit insert chart here, right on, so you don't have to go into the menu bar. So when you hit insert chart, Google Sheets automatically um, makes a decision on what they believe the chart type should be for the data present. Um, obviously you can change this and this isn't set in stone. Sometimes it's very accurate and it gets you pretty close to what you're looking for. In this situation, this is a pretty good chart. It would work to, to show the point. We might wanna change it up, spice it up, or make it slightly different, but it would be effective. So to change a chart and figure out or and, and decide which way is the best look for it, you'd come up to this over here in the chart editor, and this automatically comes up when you insert a chart. But in the event that you've had that closed and you would like to see that, you can just double click on the chart or there's three buttons here and edit chart either way. So you need to edit the chart and there's two options up here in the setup is where we will make the changes to the type of chart and the range and, and information like that. So you have your suggested charts here. These are always quite accurate to what you'd like, but obviously you can do different things. You have line charts, area charts, column charts, bar charts, pie charts, scatter charts, geo charts. These geo charts are great if you're trying to show location of customers. And then a series of other charts, radar charts, um, gauge charts, scorecards, candlesticks, etc. So there's a lot of other different charts that you can get into as you start um, trying different charts and finding what you think works best. For this chart, I actually think that the recommendations suggested will probably be our best bet. Um, I think that we'll just go with this one here. This is a good one. That's what I had built earlier. So I think it's a good looking chart. So this is a combo chart. It's a column and a line chart. It kind of gives you different visuals instead of just having a series of lines. Um, I like it for that reason, but there's other options. But so within here, you can make lots of changes. Um, obviously there's options to stack. In this situation, you're really not gonna get a lot out of stacking. So I just turn it off and see there are other areas where you might need that. Um, but in that situation, it wouldn't be necessary. To change the range, you click that little grid and you can you can add another range if you'd like, or you can come in here and you can actually just select a new range. We'll keep it what we had, but that would be how you change the range. And then your axis and your series are automatically decided by Google Sheets again. Again, you can change it if you'd like. This one turned out right, so it's put our month, because the headers, it's figured out month, and it has your months in order. And then it's put your series as projected actual and difference. So those are exactly what we're looking for in there. If you'd want to add a series, um, say you added something in here and you wanted to add that, you could click that. Um, the best bet here though is, is making sure that you just change the range to, to increase it. So then you can add that series there um, by just hitting add series. So then they have the option of switching rows and columns um, in this situation. Again, not what we're looking for. So we'll go ahead and close that off. You can use row two as headers, which we're doing. If we don't do that, it takes that out throws it off. Um, so we definitely want to use row two, column B as labels. Um, column B as labels down at the bottom, but that, that makes sense. We will leave that on. So, and then to customize it, and this is where you can really make a lot of changes and make the, the chart um, really effective. So within the customize section, you'll see a lot of different options um, present right away. 
You have your chart style, your chart axis and titles, series, legend, horizontal axis, vertical axis, and grid lines and ticks. So within this, each one will obviously change different things. For example, your chart style, you have your ability to change your background color. If you'd like something a bit darker or something that maybe fits your theme, that would be effective there. Another option in here is you can, you can smooth the lines. You can change the chart borders. Smoothing lines creates a bit of more of a wave. It's not as, as um, kind of rigid as the other option. You can maximize uh, in this situation doesn't work real well, so I'll leave that off. If you're plotting null values, that would just mean there's a zero, they're gonna plot it. If you turn that off, um, then, then that, that takes that away. Then you can also do compare mode. This isn't set up for a compare mode and you would wanna go into how to, how to do that. It's a bit more of a challenge and I won't cover that today. So in here, you really get your ability to change the colors um, of the background and the chart. It's really effective uh, for making it fit a theme or for a certain look. In the chart axis and titles, this is where you would be able to change the name. So if you wanna change the name here, we can say total sales 2021. Actually, the 20 key. And then here you can center it, you can bold it, you can change the color of the writing, font size, make it smaller, bigger. You can change the font as well. So that gives you the ability to work with the chart title. But then you can also change the chart subtitle, which currently isn't showing one um, and isn't set up to. If you would like to have that, you can set that up. Horizontal axis title which this is down here at the month. It's letting you know the month. You can change that if you'd like. Change the coloring, change the, the size and the, the bold or, or italic. And there's a vertical axis title, which here we don't have a vertical axis title, but that would be listed here if we needed it. So after that, you have the series. Um, within here, there's a few things you should pay attention to. Any changes you make currently, so if you change area, columns, lines, stepped up, you'll see it'll actually change all of them. It's not just gonna change one of them. And the reason is, is because it's up here, apply it to all series. So to, in order to select individual series, you could go in here and select projected. And then now you have the ability, you can change the line, the color. So now there's a little bit of outline there, the fill color, if you want it to be different color. Um, you can do opacity. There's a lot of ver variety on, on what you can do here. Um, that gives you the ability to format data point, which, at this stage, we won't cover because it's a bit more complicated and it's not really good for a basic tutorial. Um, you have the ability to put error bars in, so that gives you a bit more kind of idea on what the potential error, you can set the percentage on that. Data labels just puts the number at the top if you'd like that. Sometimes that works really well, sometimes it's a bit cluttered. A trend line, um, trend lines are great if you're trying to show that the trend in this situation, I think it would clutter the, the view, so we won't actually do it. But then you can come up here now and you can say, let's see, so area, which, oh, sorry. Yeah, this is this is what we were changing in a second. So we'll go back to columns of that. We'll come up here and we can change to actual. So we can now change this color to blue, say. And we can come in here and change, for example, do the star and we can make that bigger so it's real noticeable. Same thing here, error bars, data labels, etc. And then lastly, we can do the difference. And for this one, we can do just triangles and so now they stand out. Okay, same thing here, error bars, data lines, etc., data labels. And then the legend, so the legend here is up up here and we have it positioned to auto, we can change that if we'd like to say, put it up to the right. Um, I think that this one looks best on top. You change the font format, font size, bold and text color. And on the legend, the, the these automatically change based on the settings. So you, you change that back in the series if you need to. The horizontal axis on this one is the end. On this one, it's just color, font, size, and, and bold or italic. You can also, though, in this event, slant the labels. So we don't. So you can just change this here, and it will make them more and more slanted or less and less slanted. I like to leave it on auto, usually it gets it about right visually, but you can make those changes there. The vertical axis, so this again, you have the ability to change font and et cetera. Um, then you have the ability to change your min and max value. So say you wanted it to only go to 800. 
So now that bar goes all the way up to the top. So you can change that. And then if you don't want to show, maybe you only want to show the, the, from 250 up, you can cut the bottom of it off. Obviously this is not what we're looking for here. So we will just change that to being open. You can scale it however you like. I usually leave those on day, the default because it's typically better. But and then here you can change the cur uh, formatting to currency or percentage to different formats like you have with Google Sheets regularly. And the last one in here is the grid lines and ticks. In the grid lines and ticks, you're dealing with these grid lines here. And you can change the, the grid lines and allow you to um, you know, change the color if you'd like. Um, you can change whether or not you have major or minor grid lines. And then there's ticks. The ticks are going to be the on the vertical axis over here. And you can see them there. And they have minor ticks as well that you can turn on if you'd like to have that on that end. So that's how you use the chart editor. Um, obviously, your data and the data selection will be a big part of how your charts turn out. Um, but that, that would be how you go through it and customize a chart. I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you for joining us.